Lincoln High School and a very beautiful gym. I just complimented Coach on that um, with a very special young man. And I'm going to let this gentleman introduce himself at this time. Well, I appreciate being called a young man, first of all. <laughs> I don't know how, how accurate that is, but uh, I'm Alan Cosby. I'm uh, superintendent of the Etowah County Schools. Uh, also work as a district director of basketball officials uh, for the Northeast District for the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Absolutely. And one, one thing that we've noticed, um, and we've actually had people reach out to us, uh, is definitely about officials in general, how to become an official. We've also had, you know, uh, people mention to us just bringing awareness to being an official, and we're definitely going to get into that with, with you, sir, because you're the man we need to speak to about that. But before we do, for those who do not know you, tell everybody where you grew up and what that looked like. Well, I'm uh, from Rainbow City originally, grew up there, uh, actually went to elementary and middle school here at Glencoe, graduated ultimately from Southside High School, and uh, you know, I've been in education for 29 years. Um, I was a classroom teacher for uh, about seven years, assistant principal at uh, Rainbow Middle School for four, principal for four, then principal at Southside High School for two, and then superintendent for the past 12 years. So I've uh, lived in Etowah County and been around Etowah County my entire life. Growing up here in Etowah County, this is a very sports oriented county um, and it has been for many, many years. Talk about that from you know your perspective because you know, you've know you seen it from both sides now, becoming an official um, and, and seeing it from that perspective, but then growing up playing sports as well. Well, number one, Edwalk County, Northeast Alabama, it's a great area to grow up in, a great area to be involved in athletic sports in general. And as far as officiating goes, I actually started when I was in college. And uh, this is my 33rd year uh, to be wow. involved in some form of officiating. Uh, actually, this, the year we just wrapped up. So I've been around it, you know, from the school side, obviously, but also from the, uh, from the officiating side. When uh, you know you can only please about half the folks uh, with any <laughs> with any uh, with any given call, uh, but uh, you know here at, here at Glencoe obviously uh, did a ton of games in the old gym, which is just across the way, and and uh, I'm glad we've got these nice new facilities uh, here for our student athletes to participate in. But uh, it is it's a great area and uh, the, to grow up in a great area to participate, as I said, in uh, in high school athletics. We've got a got great coaches, um, you know, good facilities, and so it's just great all the way around, uh, seeing it from both sides. No doubt. What got you into your officiating career? Because that's, um, and, that, and that, to me, that's the biggest question that we, we get asked on our channel. It's like, how do I get into it? I want to get into it. Uh, what, what was it that made you decide to, to do that? Well, I was in college at Gaza State, and, uh, you know, years ago, uh, prior to that, I had a coach, you know, that, that was an official put in my head and said, hey, you know, you need to look at being an official when uh, you graduate. Because, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't going to play any anything beyond high school. And so I thought that sort of, you know, put some curiosity in my head. And then uh, I guess when I was uh, 19, 20 years old, I went and registered, signed up, got going. Uh, I think the first uh, first time I ever stepped on the floor was in a uh, scrimmage game. I believe it was at Sardis High School. Had no idea how to blow a whistle. Had not a <laughs> clue. First game I ever did was at Collinsville High School. They played Geraldine. I did a did, uh, did a, a B-team game. We call them JV now, but did a B-team game back in the day. And so uh, that kind of got me going. And then uh, from there, it was just sort of like a, sort of like a bug that bites you. You're like, I, I, I kind of like this. Of course, of course, you have to wonder, well, you know, what's there to like about a gym full of people getting on you and uh, nobody agreeing with hardly anything that you do. But you, you realize it's a service. It's a service back to the athletes, back to the, the kids, because you can't play the games without officials. Plus, it's one of the only things you'll ever do where you really expect it to start out perfect and then get better from there. It's, it's kind, of an, kind of an oddity on that. But, you know, you make a lot of mistakes. You keep moving and you keep chasing and you keep, keep going. And uh, I was uh, fortunate enough uh, to get – really going in the high school area and then uh, went to some college camps and got involved in the college thing and you know, did that for uh, for a number of years. And so uh, it, it's just something that, you know, some people really love it. Some people are like, well, wait a minute, I'm not going to do this anymore. But we've got to have officials to play games because there's, there's th I've always said there's three parts of a triangle. There's playing, there's coaching, and there's officiating. And all three have a huge part in this game. And you can't have a game without – you know, one of those three parts. And so we've seen our numbers, uh, you know, unfortunately start to decline. Uh, so we need to get folks, uh, especially young folks, into it and, and, and get them involved with it because not only uh, do you provide a service to the game, 
but uh, you know you also can make a little money and uh, you know everybody's wanting to you know make money and of course I know a lot of times officials get accused of well hey you're just here for the money and all that I've you know heard that you know many many times now the money it's it's not that great but it is uh, you know it, it, it beats doing a part-time job sometimes oh yeah because you're in an atmosphere and something you've mm-hmm. already well, in those early years what are some of the things you may tell a, a, a guy who's wanting to start out there's going to be bumps and bruises, so to speak. You're going to be a learning curve out there. What are some of those early learning curves that someone should expect that was wanting to get into it? Well, there's a different perspective on the game. When you play it, you're looking at it from that perspective. When you're coaching, you're looking at it from that perspective. But when you're officiating, it's a, it's a little different perspective. And so you've got to get used to what that you know perspective is. You know, I think the number one thing, is you've got to know the rules of the game. And I tell people all the time, learn the rules of the game. Because most people watching a game uh, don't know the rules of the game. Because there's things that, you know, are accepted, not accepted. Some things are, have been erroneously done down through the years. But you've got to know what those rules are. Because at the end of the day, there's no defense for uh, for kicking a rule. But So you've got to learn that. But you've also you've got to learn, you know, a lot of things. You've got to have a thick skin. Because you can't hear everything that's, that's, that's coming at you. Sometimes it's uh, from the stands. Sometimes it's you know from the coaches. So you've got to know sometimes you know, you know sometimes when when to speak. You know, but most important, you got to learn when to ignore. And that's a that's a big thing. There is is learning how to handle that coach that uh, that maybe a little bit irate at times, and learning you know how you control those uh, those environments sometimes that. Sometimes they're not uh, friendly environments. You know, learn how you deal with players. Learn that, you know, that you know they're playing hard. They're doing things. They're not going to agree with everything that you. But learn that, you know, that player don't just you cannot react to everything that happens. And so you've got to it, you learn a lot of patience. And really, a lot of things that you can learn in officiating, learn from doing it. It'll serve you well in your day to day you day to day life sometimes. You know, and I go back to learning the rules. Sometimes you've got to, you make every mistake there is in the book sometimes, and you learn from those mistakes. And believe me, I've made, you know, plenty of mistakes before. Never will for you. We had a game one night, a B-team game at Etowah High School. It was a two-person crew, and we had a last-second shot that went in. To this day, I don't know if it was off in time. We counted it. But I didn't realize that the trail official, uh, in that case, the one nearest half court, you had to make the determination whether the shot was good or not. We got chased off the floor that night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, I've learned, you know, I learned something I didn't know, you know, I later learned. So again, you make mistakes. And I think that's what the general public has got to realize that, you know, we've got young folks out here trying to officiate. They're going to make mistakes. And, you know, some of the things that, you know, society expects perfection a lot of times, we're not going to have that. So we've got to learn to, you know, give folks a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a cushion uh, on some of that sometimes, but uh, but again, I've, uh, I've I've seen a lot, done a lot, and uh, made a lot of mistakes. But I promise you, if I go referee a basketball game this afternoon, I'll make some mistakes in that and probably learn a little something from it. And I think that's what keeps folks coming back is that that pursuit of perfection that you never quite get to. Right, kind of a Vince Lombardi quote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now you being like a director yourself, who who. Or what type of person are you looking for? Like if you had, let's say you had this perfect molded person, like this is the guy, this is what we are looking for to become an official. Well, you know, number one, we've got to have folks that are willing to do it. And so I would encourage anybody that's willing to give it a try, give it a try. It's not for everybody. But you've got to, before you know that, you've got to, you've got to look at it and you've got to see. You know, that's number one. I think it's, I think it's not, it's not imperative, but it's important, I think, to have some knowledge of the game, either through playing or being around it and all of that, because you've got to, you've got to have that. I've, I've, I've seen great officials that may have never played, but I've also, but more often than not, they've got some background in the game to understand, to understand the ins and outs of it. Uh, as I said, you got to have rules knowledge. I think you've got to you've got to be able to know to know the rules, but more importantly, how you apply those rules. And you know, it's one thing to know them, but you get to apply those rules through day to day and through basically through trial and error is what you do. Another thing, you know, to have folks that are that ideally that are they they look the part of an official. Uh, you know, we we like someone that you know that be able to run the floor because you've got to got to be able to get in position to do that. That's another. You know, that's another, I guess, uh, ideal thing that you have there. 
But I think the biggest thing that we need is folks that are willing to give it a try and, and then develop and get better and do those types of things. And so that's the biggest thing that I, that I, that I think you need. And also, as I, as I mentioned earlier, folks that uh, over time, they, they get better and they know that, you know, you don't react to everything that coach says. You don't react to everything that a player does. You, you've got to know, you know, how to do those things. You know, recognize the ins and outs of the game. You know, you know players want to be able to play. You know, recognize what a good block shot is. Recognize what, uh, what has a bearing on the game. And, and all those, uh, you know, all those types of things, because, you know, basketball, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a player's sport. And so, you know, realize, you know, have a good, I'm going to say a good feel for the game, for what it, you know, for what it is. And there's a lot of things that you put into that. And good officials aren't developed over, you know, one, two, three years. It's a, it's a multi-year process. How has the game changed from an officiating standpoint? Um, you know, the NBA gets a very bad rep in the way they, you know, mm -hmm. do not call travels, things like that. Let's talk about on the high school level. Say like when I graduated in the, in the late 90s or whatever. Since then to now, how much has the game changed from an official standpoint? Well, I think it's changed, you know, a good bit. Obviously, if you go way back in the, in the late 80s when the three-point shot came in, that expanded the game a little bit because people got more on the perimeter, you know, when we did that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, most everything that you see at the pro level, college level, eventually it comes to the college level, excuse me, the high school level rather. And so what happens is, you know, you've got motion offenses where you've got multiple screens being set, you've got, you know, high screens, you've got all kinds of different things and recognizing, you know, for instance, what's the difference between a hard screen that needs to be called a foul or a, or a screen that maybe a borderline play that you can, but you've got to know that as an official. But also, you know, realize freedom of movement. That's huge in our game today because so many times we as officials don't call that with cutters going through the lane and maybe they get bumped or chucked. But basketball is a freedom of movement game. And I think sometimes maybe the game, we've allowed it to get a little bit too rough. And again, that comes sometimes from some of the higher levels uh, on that. So I think we've got, you know, jobs to do with that. But to recognize that, you know, one thing, you know, coaches are, Better than they've ever been with uh, with uh, with the training and the things that they're doing, and the offenses are more complex in in what they do, and to recognize as an official that you know we've got to be able to step our game up and know what the coaches and the players are trying to do within that offense. And again, I say I think the biggest part is is all the screening and all the movement in today's game. The athletes have gotten better yeah. over time. You know they're quicker, they're stronger and all those types of things, and that in turn affects, you know, sometimes how the game is officiated. Yeah, because they kind of force your hands. Absolutely, the, yes. Because they're moving so fast. Yeah. I don't honestly, when I see uh, teams play such as like a plain view, mm -hmm. I don't know how, with that motion offense and those screens, I don't know how you, how you guys do it. I just, I commend you on that, you know. It's very, very, it looks very different. Well, several years ago, the Alabama High School, High School Athletic Association went three-person crew. So you've got three officials with them. They had a lead, which is typically your official that would be on the baseline under the basket, a center official, which is somewhere free throw line extended, and then also a trail official, which is about at what the old 28-foot mark, which players today don't know what 28-foot mark is because we've taken the hash mark out of the game pretty much That's just right. where the coach's box That's right. you know, would come in. So you've got three officials. Each one is responsible for a certain – uh, you know, for a certain area on the floor. And that's another thing that you teach, uh, teach new officials is, you know, what's your areas of responsibility uh, within that. And, of course, with so much movement, so many things in the game there, we've always, we, we preach off-ball officiating and that, you know, we can't have three ball watchers out there because so much of the game, it's off the ball with that's the right. screens and, and various things like that. And that's the thing that, that you, you have, to, have to teach folks. And, again, you know, if, we, if we're watching the ball, we're probably missing something Illegal off the ball. Yeah. Um, another thing, from a difficulty standpoint, um, once you become an official, how do you keep working on your craft? What was something you would tell someone that maybe that watch this as an official now? What are some of the things that you know someone to keep someone from getting steadfast to stay hungry and working on their craft? Well, in the summertime, players are playing all the time going to team camps, and. Uh, when I first started into it, team camps were just getting going uh, back at that point in time. So there's all kinds of opportunities to work during the summer because you get better at your craft, you've got to keep doing it. And so I, I tell people I probably refereed more camp games than I have real games in my life, probably for free, 
you know, because I can remember, you know, going and doing seven, eight games a day and so sore I couldn't walk. And I certainly at my age now, I couldn't do that anymore. But just referee and just keep working. The more plays as a referee that you see, you catalog those plays in your mind. And those plays, the next time you see them, probably aren't going to surprise you. You know, right. it, it, it referees, refereeing is basically a reaction to experience. And the more experience you have, typically the better you're going to get. So I'd encourage a young person, if they're interested in getting going, you know, start in the summertime uh, with, you know, the various team camps because, uh, you know, all, all high schools, they're playing multiple games uh, during the summertime. They need folks to referee those games. That's how you start getting that, uh, that experience. And that, in turn, will prepare you for when the real games start uh, in the fall, uh, fall of the year. And I know over the years, I know this is a little bit different type of question, but over the years, you've had to have some pressure cook games. I mean, like, uh, what's some of the ones that really stuck out to you? It's like, man, this is – but at the same time, it has to be satisfying once those games are over with and you guys do your job. Well, you've got all kinds of things. And, yeah, I'm just trying to think if one thing in particular sticks out. You know, I mentioned these facilities here. Some of the – when I was just first getting going, some of the – best games I remember were some of these old gyms in Etowah County. Oh, yeah. You know, back Glencoe and Hoax Bluff playing each other in a smaller gym. You couldn't get another person in the gym. You couldn't hear yourself think, and you're just you're just trying to survive. <laughs> I mean, basically, it's all you're, all you're trying to oh, do yeah. because you've got a rivalry game. You've got, you know, kids going at it and trying to do the, you know, trying to do the you know, very best you can uh, with that. But, you know, all games are a little bit different. But, yeah, you're in some, you're in some intense and – you know, tight environments uh, sometimes. Uh, you don't always have security uh, to help you at some point in time. Sometimes you're literally, you know, you're running for your life. And I've been, <laughs> been lucky, you know, been lucky on that over the years. But, you know, I've had a lot of games that, um, you know, everybody, whatever game you're doing, no matter what level it is, it's the most important game to those kids and those coaches is that at that point in time. There's mm-hmm. no game that's, that, right. that's not important. And that's what you you know you have to do. You have to, you know, put yourself, you know, on that game. But uh, you know, I've had, you know, a ton of games down through the years at the high school level, the collegiate level, that were that were all intense and you, you know, you you just basically rise to, to what those are and do the very uh, you know, do the very best that you can uh, with that. But you know, the games where you've got you know that that tight environment you know fans are on top of you and everything i mean those are fun oh, those yeah. are those those are those are a bunch of fun uh, and you know I've, I've you know been fortunate to have uh, have my share of those uh, right. over the years and uh and yeah i can't tell you that one in particular uh stands out but you know you just uh, so many probably you do, you just you know you just hope i can recall one game it's a junior college game several years ago actually with southern union community college and uh, they were playing Chattahoochee Valley. We actually had a two-person crew on this game uh, back in the day. You had you know, college coaches there, so, you know, packed house or whatever. I had a basket interference that I called that uh, that actually wiped off, you know, what could be the, uh, the you know the winning basket uh, with uh, you know, about two seconds to go in the game. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you don't have instant replay on all that. And then you know, the next day I got a call from someone there and said, "Hey, you got it right." And there's no better mm-hmm. feeling than to know. You, you know, oh, yeah. you know, you got something right. Of course, now we've got, you know, a lot of games, even at high school level, with uh, you know, with you've got sixteen thousand different camera angles, and oh, yeah. everybody, you know, evaluates it like that. But I've been fortunate to be in some some good games. And everybody in the stands is an expert. <laughs> everybody in the stands, you know, nobody's missed a play. That's right. They're a hundred percent. That's right. And uh, you're only gonna make fifty percent of them happy. And sometimes you don't make fifty percent of them. Happy. You know, you don't. That's awesome. Um, got two more questions for you, then I'll let you go because I know you're a very, very busy man being the superintendent and all. That. Um, the first one is, where does someone go if he wants to become an official? What, where does he need to go? Well, the Alabama High School Athletic Association has information uh, on their website that uh, can can get you going. You can contact uh, you can contact them, and uh, they can you know start that process to get going. Uh, you know, if anyone, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I can, you know, get them going in this area. And, you know, I'm normal, I'm a basketball guy, but, uh, you know, we need folks in, in all sports, you know, regardless of where that is. But, you know, that's, you know, initially, uh, you know, initially what they would do. Uh, I'm a high school athletic, athletic association and then, you know, and then go from there. There's local associations. You would register with a local association and, uh, 
and you know start that uh, you know start that process. But again, you know, I'd be glad for anybody to you know contact me, and you know I'd be glad to you know be glad to assist them with that process. And our final question is just final thoughts on everything um, to kind of recap everything, and just any kind of final thoughts you'd like. Well, number one, can't play the game without referees. And I know, you know, look at it from a school standpoint, you know, we've got student athletes throughout our county, throughout our area, they want to play. And I know, uh, you know, talking about another sport, my son, uh, he actually plays basketball, but he also plays soccer. Last, uh, not this season, but last season, actually had a game castle in soccer because they didn't have enough referees. Mm. And I don't want that to happen to our student athletes. So we've got to have folks that are willing to do it. In basketball, the Alabama High School Athletic Association, uh, actually registered a little over 1,700 officials this last season. But that's down 200 pre-pandemic. And so our numbers are going down nationwide. They're going down. So, again, I want to encourage anybody that's you know in, in school, just out of school, or, or whatever, if they think they have an interest in that, We'd love to have you involved with that because, again, we can't play those play those games without anybody. We're actually having officials like myself that, you know, we've uh, we've got a year or two behind us here, and and uh, you know we're not going to be going, you know, that much longer. So again, we've got to keep folks, you know, keep that pipeline coming because officiating is the only thing you do. The players get younger every year. You know, they, they, the players they're the same age, and you know we're getting a little bit older. So. We've, you know, we've got folks that are that are moving out, so we've got to keep folks involved uh, with it. And it's it's a it's an avocation. Uh, it's not a vocation, but it's an avocation. It's something that uh, you can do to stay around the game. It keeps you in good shape. I think it keeps you mentally sharp. But it's also you know, giving back to your communities, giving back to the folks that uh, that you know we we need officials. Absolutely, I appreciate you taking time out. And, you know, we talked to Alvin Briggs. Begin the season about it, and he even said, you know, some states has had to cancel games and then move, you know, even football games on Thursday nights because it's, it's had an epidemic low in some places. We definitely do, do not want to get that that way here in Alabama. So obviously that's one of the reasons we're doing this right. video and having someone such as yourself coming on is a, is a great way to start this out. Well, I'll be glad to help anybody get started because we want to we want to you know keep that going. And you know, the number one priority is our student athletes and our kids that uh, they just want to play the game. And so that's that's the number one reason that uh, that we, we do what we do, both educationally and then also athletically. Thank you so much, and you have a great day, and I really appreciate you coming on. Well, I appreciate you asking me to be on, and I appreciate what y'all do for uh, high school sports.